good day and thank you so much for tuning in today's video my name is Sharon Sharinda and today I will be talking about support for vulnerable communities now there's different groups of people that tend to be vulnerable for various reasons and an example of a vulnerable group would be for example your elderly people in society um, people who are also victims of abuse different forms of abuse this could be children um, it can also be victims of um, gender-based violence such as women or men who are abused in romantic relationships um, we also have people living on the streets that we call homeless people oftentimes um, that are vulnerable because of different social ills or circumstances that are sometimes often outside of their own control so I want to look more into how we can support these kind of people in terms of navigating their challenges and their experiences now it is firstly important to recognize that it's very important to support vulnerable groups because support for vulnerable groups can be very beneficial to the people in different ways. Now firstly, um, by supporting someone that's vulnerable, meaning that this person is possibly exposed to some form of hurt, um, by supporting them, what that could do is that it could help them to overcome the adversity, the adversities that they face because of that particular situation. So, for example, if they're an elderly person, they might struggle to navigate some of life's day-to-day -day tasks. You know, if they are a victim of abuse, you know, they, their life may be at risk. They might not be able to have um, social skills anymore because of the hurt emotionally and physically. So by supporting these people, what we do is that we create an atmosphere where they're able to navigate um, these adversities and challenges. Through offering support, we can enable them to better be equipped to navigate these difficulties. Um, and even if it's things that, that cannot necessarily change, for example, if someone is living with a disability, but by offering them support, you can help them to be able to reach their full potential in ways that they would not have been able to without the support. Another thing that can be very beneficial when we offer support is that it creates, it builds, it helps them to build resilience. Now, resilience is a very important trait for people to have. And it's basically the ability, we normally say that it's, it's the ability to bounce back from adversity. Um, but it's beyond that, you know, it's a state of being where one is able to respond to different kind of challenges and still be able to continue with life. Um, without necessarily being stuck in the difficulty that they experience. So through offering support, it also helps that um, the, whatever vulnerable people that we are surrounded by in our space, that they can build resilience to be better equipped to overcome the challenges that they face and to be able to gain perspective and a change in how they view themselves um, in terms of whatever way um, that they are made vulnerable by whatever it is that they are facing. Um, it is also important that through offering support, um, we can make people to be more functional. You know, they be, can be able to achieve their life goals better. They can be able to be better integrated into society, unlike when they are isolated and withdrawn without support from people in their lives, such as ourselves, whether it is colleagues or people in our, fam in our families. So there are different ways in which we can offer support to vulnerable people in our lives. Oftentimes we tend to think that um, support needs to come through programs that are structured um, or healthcare providers or the government. And we often neglect to recognize the efforts that we can do to enable to, to, to give people support that would enable them to function better. So first of all, the first thing that can be very helpful is to not have a, a judgmental attitude towards vulnerable people. Oftentimes when a person is in a place of vulnerability, either because they're a victim of circumstances or something that was outside of their control, we might tend to think that it's their fault that they stayed in the abusive marriage. We might tend to think that it's their fault that now they're old and um, their children have lived and they have become slow and we feel like they're dragging us down. So it's important that we stop being judgmental because we don't understand the circumstances that got people there. And even if we do understand, it's not our place to judge. And then secondly, um, we can offer emotional support by being present and by being available to listen. Sometimes people don't need us to give, they don't necessarily need you to give them anything tangible or money or whatever it is that's outside of your control. 
but just by being there and being able to listen to their difficulties and um, hearing them out and giving guidance wherever you can, then then that can go a long way because by talking to you, they're able to externalize whatever it is that they are feeling and they can feel like their voice is heard. Another way in which we can offer support is through advocacy. Now, advocacy is speaking out for people who cannot speak for themselves. This also includes raising awareness because sometimes people can be ignorant to the difficulties that people face and we might tend to make statements um, that can be offensive and also false that would be more harmful than do good and further expose the person. So it's important that we build advocate that we become um, advocates of those that cannot speak for themselves. I mean, imagine an abused child. How do they speak out for themselves? So by having those skills of advocacy, then we are also able to stand in the gap in some of the ways, which is, uh, which is another way in which we can offer support. And also, if we do have the means, the financial means or resources within our spaces or resources we can link them to, you know, to link them to resources that can help them function better. So, for example, if this is a person that is um, experiencing gender-based violence, for example, and they need to get out of their home, there are various senses that are places of safety for people in those kind of situations. Now, if you are informed and you know of facilities like that, then you can link them to those resources. If it's older persons in our lives, you know, we can send them up in programs for active aging, for example, and things that they can do to make their lives to be meaningful and that they will not um, reach a state where they are constantly um, thinking about their challenges, where it might even lead to mental health challenges such as depression or anxiety. So with that being said, um, it is a challenge to all of us that in whatever space that we find ourselves in, being surrounded by people who are vulnerable, to be intentional, to seek out to support and to seek to link them to help um, that they can find that would make their lives more easier. So do remember that um, it's not easy. Sometimes it can be challenging, especially if, for example, you have a mother or a spouse or a family member that has certain difficulties like a disability. And it would be difficult for you maybe to even cope with living with someone like that. There is definitely nothing wrong with seeking out help and to get even professional intervention to help you navigate those challenges better. So thank you so much for tuning in today's episode and I hope you will have a great week ahead. Until next time.